Hello and welcome to the F16 DCS. It's the 26th of December, it's the day after Christmas, and we've just got a whole bunch of stuff in the F16. So in this one, if I can start rocking my head around, we're going to take a look at the easiest way of using countermeasures, which includes the jammer for the F16. So I've set up a real simple mission which includes a SAM site and an enemy aircraft, and we're going to take a look real quick the easiest way to employ this so before we take off and get going the first thing we're going to look at is a couple of real important controls without this we're not going to get anywhere so absolutely essential in employing this is this button here the chaff flare dispense button which is found on the left console and i have got that bound to a control over here and then the other two that are absolutely required is found in the countermeasures management switch on the hotel stick is the forward and aft. Now I'm going to assume at some point left and right are going to become important too. So I've got those bound ready. But basically you want forward and aft. You need those two switches and the chaff flare dispense button. Those three are absolutely critical in order to make best use of this. So let's get back into the cockpit. And let's take off. As you can see, I do have the uh, jamming pod bound on the center pylon there underneath the belly of the aircraft. Let's get the burners on too. Try and stay on the runway might help. All right, at this moment in time. Turn on the system here, the RWR system. We might kill the uh, externals. And let's just put it into a gentle climb. I'm going to power this system up here, which is the jammer. So the forward switch there, the leftmost switch, sorry, is in the forward position for operate. I'm going to press all of these so that there's a yellow S on positions one through five. I'm going to pause it here real quick. We have a choice. We have a choice either to have the jammer transmitting the entire time or just when we need it i will say when you transmit with the jammer you lose you immediately lose access to your own radar and for at least a while afterwards so i would suggest having this ready to go but only when you need it you could have that automatically or when you say If you want it to be when you say leave this in position three and dial this over to manual if you want it on automatic dial this switch to semi and move that switch forward so there's your two choices all right so if you want it the jammer to come on when you say i'm gonna have to uh, live pause this one sec if i can remember how to do it Um, there we go. If you want this to only come on when you say, dial this switch to manual mode there. Leave that one at the back. And now, when you want it to come on, press your CMS aft switch. That's it. But if you want it to be a little more intelligent and you want it to come on as and when there's a threat, move this over to semi. Move this switch to from the back to the front also press cms aft and then it will light up as required so i'm going to put it into that mode so again we've enabled all these lights we've got this switch forward into operate mode we've got this switch forward into position number one and we've got this mode into semi now it's gonna work if i press cms aft watch what happens with these lights 
you see we've got five green A's. And it's as easy as that. That system is now energized, ready to go. As soon as the RWR detects a threat, this system's going to power up. And when it powers up, it's going to knock out our own radar. Because we'll be that busy jamming our own radar. We'll be jammed within it. The next thing that I want to do before we get any closer is set up our countermeasures. And again, this is about it being as easy as possible. And so remember those two switches that we set up. Let's just come for a quick reminder. The aft button is used to basically uh, activate the jammer we've just been through. It basically says go for the settings that we've got. But we're now going to make use of the forward switch, which I'm going to use for chaff dispense and then the chaff flare button is going to be used for my flares so the way that we're going to set that up if we come here i'll just turn that down a little bit is we're going to come over here to the list button and choose option seven there cmds or the countermeasures display we're going to set up option number one here we know which option it is we see here We've got the uh, option, it actually uses this rocker, I have it bound. But you see there, we've got program number one. So that's the first one that we're going to use. So to come into that, we're going to move this dobber switch to the right. And here we see what's going to happen for program one. We've got one bundle of chaff to be released that many milliseconds apart. 20, it doesn't really count because there's only one, but if we add more than one. And we are going to add more than one. So I'm going to add three. So in this case, we're going to have three bundles of chaff released 20 milliseconds apart 10 times. But I only want it to happen one time. So I'm going to press one and enter. And because it's only going to happen one time, it doesn't need to repeat every one second. So we can ignore that last line. So in other words, what this entire screen now says is three bundles of chaff every 20 milliseconds one time. And I'm now going to scroll to the right because that's not the end of the program. Because in addition to chaff, we have flares. And we see this is the default setting for program one. I'm just going to zero this out. So I want zero bundles, zero times. And that's it. So now when I run program one, which is going to be bound to my CMS forward switch. The one that we've just been through in the controls. It's just literally going to chuck out. I scroll through three flares, uh, three chaff, sorry, and that's it. That's all that button's going to do. So now I'm going to scroll forward between program number two, program number three, program number four. And those are the four programs we have access to on this dial here. You see there we've just got one, two, three, four. Program five, guess what? That is the program that this button controls. The chaff flare dispense button, which if we look in the cockpit, is this one here. So what we're going to do is set this one up for flares only. So if I zoom out, you see we've got the default chaff setting. Important that we zero this out, zero and zero. And now move over to the flare setting. And I just want this to fire flares. Now I could just fire it, fire one or two, but really if you've got a heat seeker after you, one or two flares is no good. So I'm going to chuck out six flares. 50 milliseconds apart. That might be a little too close. So I might go 0075. And then that way we've got 75 milliseconds apart between each flare. And again, I just want to run it one time. And with that, we've got both keys set up. So I can now double left here to come out of that. And I can get on with the rest of my mission. So what I might do is go forward, forward. Because guess what? Steer point three is my bull's point. Let's just see if that is the way that it is. So is it? Uh, it's list miscellaneous eight for bulls. It says waypoint 25. I'm going to set it as my waypoint three, steer point three. There we go. And I'll okay with that. Um, we can actually... Was it? Okay. I'm sure there was a way to have an additional.
There we go. So you highlight the bullseye bit and then and then press the right and you get the extra bit of information uh, there, down there. Okay. So with that, let's unpause. Whoops. It's the... What is it? Is it control shift? Con uh, shift windows? There we go. <laughs> and you really need to remember those controls. All right. So with that, let's get master arm on. And with this set up, let's begin flying towards target. I'm just going to pause it real quick because you see there my target, the uh, the SAM site there, the yellow ring on the right screen. But we also see on the left here is an airborne target. Now, I've got no AWACS or no data link of any kind. That target there is being picked up by my own sensor. So I'm going to fly. I'm going to get a soft lock on target. And now we see the info there and heads up. Let's come into air to air mode and change to the uh, 120 120C. And now our jammer. See the jammer coming on and off doing its thing. It's able to jam the enemy aircraft at this moment in time. At some point it's going to burn through. And that's now happened. You see, the jammer is no longer able to prevent the uh, system locking. I have no idea why our aircraft is still able to lock on the enemy because the radar does stop working. I'm going to suggest that is a bug. And we've uh, taken out the MiG there. What I'm going to do at this point, I should have said, because we're in manual mode, we want, yeah, semi automatic, so we're there. There's the chaff button, there's the flare button. Just make sure if you're in manual mode that this, that <laughs> I've gone through the two different modes in semi here. If we had it in manual mode, we would still be able to deploy the countermeasures the same, except this jammer wouldn't activate automatically. So that's the options. We did dis I did discuss that earlier. I, I, uh, I panicked for a moment there. So now we see the radar's working again, so that's great news. Let's just move this over to continuous jamming mode now. So in order to jam continuously and remember that's not the same as stealth some people do get that mixed up change the mode switch here onto manual mode coming over to this panel here drop this transmit button down from position one to position three and now once again press your aft cms switch and now you see all four well all five lights sorry have that blue t it's kind of hard to see in the sun but all of those are now transmitting. And now, once again, if we look on the left screen there, the radar is non-functional. To turn it off, and we also see the ECM there to show that we are jamming. To turn it off, uh, I find go to standby and then back to operate. That unlocks it, and now you see we've got the radar back again. There's the SAM site locking us up. Let's press into operate. CMS aft. We're currently jamming. And it would see that we're unable to break the SAM lock. We're maybe too close. Let's try notch the SAM site. Don't forget the blind spot of the RWR is underneath the aircraft. So just because you do that doesn't mean you've broke the lock. It just means in this case we did. So our jammer notching the SAM site has indeed broken the lock. Let's pick up the pace again. Don't forget you've also got a blind sight on top of the aircraft. Let's try and prove the point. We're locked up. There it is. And let's try to see it that side. There it is. 
Okay, so with that, I think we've gone over the quick ways to the easiest ways to use the countermeasures and the jammer on the F-16. This is certainly the way that I'll be flying all the time in the F-16 now that they've added that switch with respect to the countermeasures. As for how I'm going to use the jammer, I don't know. I'm still going to play with it a bit. I have found it to be useful on the outermost ranges of SAM sites and enemy aircraft. So there is that. But again, the payoff is you lose access to your own radar. So is it worth jamming the outer 20-30% of a range of an enemy system in return for you not being able to use yours at all? I guess it all hangs off. Do you have a data link and how reliably and... The way that I found, if a SAM site fires at you at the 100% max range, that missile is almost for sure going to be a waste unless you're a useless pilot. And if the SAM site can't fire at you until you're 60 to 70% inside of that maximum range ring, well, that missile all of a sudden is 10 times more deadly than it was before. So is that an advantage or not? I'll leave that one for you to answer. It's certainly a pros and cons mixed bag of tricks. That being said, is it nice to have the option? Absolutely. And I've found, in terms of notching both aircraft and SAM sites, this jammer comes into its own when you're using that kind of thing. So, with that being said, until next time, take care. Bye-bye.